All right, what's going on guys? I am out here with our RV. Now, with the coronavirus and everything else, we didn't get to do a lot of traveling or anything this season. Uh, we had, you know, went to Alaska and spent the season up there for the summer and had kind of contemplated on whether we'd do that again this year or not. But with the coronavirus and the borders being closed, we really couldn't get out and do any traveling. Um, couple of things that we noticed on the RV is one of them is we wanted to upgrade the rear lights and had been playing around with a couple of different ideas and things of that nature and finally um, somebody had posted on one of the Thor groups about adding LED strips up the side here um, so I got out and uh, started doing a little bit of checking a little bit of research and I found a company called Z Moon um, they're obviously made in China, which I think most of these things are, but we ended up getting two of their 60 inch LED truck tailgate lights. Uh, this is the same thing that was pictured and videoed on the Thor group. Uh, the difference is, is I don't remember which product that they chose, but I chose these. Um, I have purchased some Z Moon products before and reviewed some Z Moon products before and was really happy with them. Uh, the build quality and the overall just, you know, performance of the product has held up. So I've already installed one of these on the side over here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through installing it on this side. And in the box, you're going to get an extension cable that you can connect in and run to hardwire you're also going to get the full led cable we've got here now this has got what appears to be double-sided tape on the back whether it's 3m or a different product um, from a different manufacturer i really don't know but it seems to be pretty well quality product as far as the tape goes now I'm gonna bring you in real close and I'm gonna show you something and I apologize for the lighting I'm out here in the Sun but if you can see right here I actually cut the back of this little plastic piece off because what I want to do is I want that to sit flush on the back of the RV when I tape it down and you can see that the tape extends all the way back up under here um, it's a little bit hard for me to get a hold of here but once I get it peeled up there you go you can see right there that the tape extends all the way to the end there. So I want to make sure this thing has full adhesion. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll put a little silicone around this or a little bit of sealer to uh, seal it, keep moisture out. I did the same thing on the top end. You can see, cut that off. I'll do the same thing. We'll seal that once we get it put on. And then this has actually got the full cable here where if you were installing this on a truck, um you could actually run this and plug it in directly into a four-way pin connector if you wanted to um i choose not to do that uh, i'm actually going to cut mine and hardwire it in and i just pulled it apart right at the fuse connector which is fine because that's basically where i was going to cut it so what we'll do is we'll give ourselves about this much length in wire here and we'll cut that off nice and flush and then what we'll end up doing is we'll just discard that plug because we don't need it now one thing that I noticed is down here at the bottom the wires are exposed so what I end up doing is grabbing a little box of heat shrink tube in here and I got a couple of different sizes in here but what I found that works is this uh, I believe it's 8th inch um, Yes, 8 inch, 14 to 18 gauge. Now, these wires are really small, so it doesn't take a super big piece to go over all of them. But we're just going to slide it over and slide it all the way down to where it covers up the exposed colors of the wire there. And then I'm going to take a lighter and I'm going to melt that into place. Uh, and that's the one thing that I didn't bring out here with me to do this side of the project was the lighter. So let me pause the video, I'll go grab it, come back, we'll get this melted into place and then we'll get ready to start installing it. Alright guys, so I'm back with you. 
I'm gonna hold this down where it's nice and snug against that plastic cover. And I'm just gonna use my regular old cigar lighter. And we're just gonna heat this heat shrink up until it pulls down nice and snug around the base. Now I'm gonna hold that while it cools and I'm gonna get in here a little bit closer so you can see. That's got that pulled down nice and tight, got the wires covered. Now you can see I didn't fully melt it because I'm holding on to this end, it gets a little hot. So once this cools and sets in place, then I'll melt the rest of it and we'll get ready to do the install. All right. Got our heat shrink melted down completely right here. Now what I need to do is take a tape measure and I'm going to measure how far up on the other side I am from this point down here where the trim molding is up to where I started my LED strip. That way I get them both nice and even. Alright, so that's going to be 11 inches where we're going to come up to. So what I'll do is take my LED strip, start my tape peeling off, and I'm only going to peel back about four inches or so, just enough to where I can stick it and get it to stay in place. Now I know from the other side that I'm about a thumb's width away from the edge of the RV here. So just about a thumb's width is all I'm going to put it. And I'm going to come in here set my tape measure at 11 inches, which is going to be right there, and that tells me where the bottom of my LED strip is going to go. My wire's untangled. Alright, now, I know I'm about a thumb's width over, so that's where I'm going to start this one. I'm just going to stick it in place right there. Now, I am set. That's all I got to do is maintain that thumb's width all the way up. And I've got a ladder out here that I'll use right here. Bring it over, stand on it, and I'll pull the tape a little bit at a time and put it on as I go up. So let me go ahead and get the light stuck in here. Now as I peel the tape off, I'm still not peeling all the tape off. I'm pretty much just trying to keep that consistent line all the way up so it's nice and straight. And then I'm really pressing this double-sided tape down. I want to make sure it sticks really good because I don't want this thing coming off. So like I said, about a thumb's width for me. Um, you could measure this and put a piece of tape up through here something to use as a guideline if you'd like to. I think for the most part I can pretty much eyeball it up through here. You get it about where I want it. Stick it on and then pull our tape off completely. Come up here, get our top set and flatten the rest of it out. Now, again like I said, I'm gonna mash this down really good down through here. I wanna make sure it's stuck on nice and solid. Now, we got that installed. And then we'll pull our wire over and it's gonna actually tuck up underneath our tail light lens. And I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna pull it in here a little bit closer. We're gonna pop this tail light out and I'm gonna show you how to set the wire in there. All right guys. We got the tail light out. Basically, all I done is went through and took the six screws loose all the way around. You don't have to take these two out. However, if you want to separate this red lens from the housing in order to replace either one of these two bulbs, which by the way are 3157, then you have to take these two screws out because this actually seals against the red housing. All right, so we're gonna flip this over and then we've got different color wires here. We've got different color wires here. We've got a small spec sheet over here. 
it does not give you the wire colors basically what it comes down to is it gives you the diagram and shows you right here what the wires are as they pin out here and then you have to match the colors up now normally white would be ground for trailer wire but it's not in this situation so you have to pay close attention to these wire colors brown is going to be ground um, and that's also the line that they put the fuse in i'm really not sure about that um, each one of these tail light circuits and everything has fuses in them so if we have a shorter problem we're going to pop the fuse inside there's no fuse hidden back here that we have to hunt so we're good to go there uh, you can see from looking in here that the plywood and stuff is still intact nice and smooth the sawdust is dry so we don't have any water intrusion here what we are going to do is we're going to run this right underneath the rubber weather strip that's on the tail light itself um, that you can see down here in the lower part of the image here and then what we'll do is we're just going to compress against that then what i'll do is i'll come back and i'll inject a little bit of rtv silicone in here in order to seal that off to make sure we don't get any moisture in there so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tie into our ground now on the rv it's wired similar to most trailer wiring the white is going to be our ground so i'm actually going to cut that in two um, you can see they've already used one of these little crimp style connectors in here, a little blue in there, and there's no moisture going inside of this panel here, so I'm not really worried about moisture getting to it. If I was concerned about moisture, then I would basically go through, cut these, solder it all together, and heat shrink it so it's sealed so no moisture can get in. Since we don't have any moisture intrusion here, and we don't have to worry about it, I'm simply going to use just regular little butt connectors. I'm using the red ones, uh, which are for the smaller gauge wire. I got a pack of those here, and we're going to take our wire strippers. This is 18 gauge wire, so we'll just find the 18 on here on our stripper. And we'll just strip off about a quarter of an inch. Just like that. And here do the same thing now we're doing the ground so we're going to take our brown wire which we reference back to our sheet and i'm going to strip it at 22 to 20 gauge because it's really small wire but i'm going to strip off about three quarters of an inch of it the reason for that is i want to be able to take it down here and actually wrap it around and around this ground wire by placing it side by side and then twisting this longer strand around this multiple times because what i want to do is i want to create basically a spiral all the way around that wire to the very top and then once it gets to the top it's tied on there now some people will just twist that tape it and leave it be i'm not a fan of that i prefer to use crimp connectors or solder or heat shrink something to that extent so i know i've got a secure connection uh, that being said, we're going to slide this red one on there until the insulation's up inside of the insulated core of the crimp. And then using our pliers, we're just simply going to crimp it down. Now, make sure that's secure. It is. It's not going to pull loose. Last thing we want to do is lose tail lights in the process of doing all this. Then we're going to slide the other side in, do the same thing, bury it up until the insulation makes contact with the metal sleeve inside. And then we'll use these crimpers here to crimp this one. Now, we have successfully crimped in our ground circuit. The red wire is going to be for our reverse lights. That's also the red wire on this system. Now, here's where things get unique with this. The white wire is for the running lights. The yellow and green... If you were using this on a pickup truck, these would be separated. One's right, one's left. For our purposes on the RV and for what I did on the other side, we're actually going to splice both of these together and they're going to tie into the brake and turn signal circuit that comes to the tail light. And then what that's going to do is it's going to cause our yellow LEDs to go out each time the turn signal flashes. So you're going to get that nice 
warning back there on the back side that you're making a turn or you're changing lanes and traffic will be able to see you. Now I showed you how to do this first cut and crimp. I'm not gonna do that for every one of them. I'm just gonna stop the camera. I'm gonna go ahead and wire this up. I'll let you see a finished picture of it. Um, and I'll tell you the wire colors and stuff here to know which ones are which. And then we'll get you going and show you how all the system's gonna work. All right, so here we are. Everything is wired up. The black wire right here, that's gonna be our running light. Like I said, the yellow and the green ties into the green wire. That is the brake and turn signal circuit right there. Red goes to reverse, brown goes to white, and that's it. We are hooked up. I'm ready to put the tail light back in, pull this over, put it underneath the rubber seal here where it gets mashed down. Um, it's the same thing they did with the tail light, with the tag light here. Um, you can see it right here. They just basically ran it through and they just pushed the seal over top of it and it seals off because there's no water intrusion in here. So it's going to work, but I'm still going to go back and add a little bit of silicone or something in there, a little black RTV or something just on my finger, just to fill that void in, just to make sure. Um, so we can basically just set this panel back up here, right here. You can see right here, that's where that's going to go under. Um, it does pull a little bit right there and like I said this right here is gonna have to be stuck down good I'll put a little sealer on that little piece right there just to cover the end cap But uh, now all we do is put our screws back in and uh, Each one of these six screws will get tightened up and then we'll go in and we'll do some tests All right, guys, so there you go. That's got the tail lights working back here on the RV. Uh, that's the LED upgrade. I appreciate, I can't remember who posted it, but I really appreciate them posting it because it was a great idea, great concept. It seems to work really well, and I know at night it's really going to make the back of the RV stand out, especially when we're changing lanes. Most of us drive on the interstate, so if you get caught up in traffic, traffic slows down, you throw those four ways on, those flashing LEDs back there are really going to catch traffic's attention and let people know you're slowing down. Um, so I think it's going to be an added safety feature for the RV all the way around. Uh, plus, with the added reverse lights, that's going to be even another safety feature to help you while you're backing up. Guys, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, things have been super busy. We are trying to get as many videos out as we can, so be sure hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Stick with us. We're going to be coming to you with more. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below, and I'll drop affiliate links for these LED strips down in the description so you can actually order them and install them yourself. Guys, thanks. I appreciate it.